Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome back to our weekly update to the presidential election race. And <clears throat> so I have a few small updates. Um, for those of you who didn't see my political soapbox, uh, I do have a Twitter now, and it should be linked on my channel. Um, I'll be basically tweeting this stuff out anyway, so whatever. And like I made a joke yesterday, um, we'll see how long it takes me for uh, it takes for me to become inactive on Twitter. I'm giving it about three weeks. Um, so we go down because of all the Dow stuff that's going on. I mean, seriously, it's better than it opened, but it's still not good overall. I mean. Basically, this is what we're looking at. And a lot of people are going to be arguing, oh, God, the market's going to crash. Well, people don't like uncertainty. And if and the more coronavirus spreads abroad, even though it's spread here in the U.S. is limited as far as we can tell, though our, we are testing it a lot slower than some nations are. Um, we'll see. I don't think it's that big of a threat. I don't think people need to be panicking. I definitely don't think investors should be panicking. You know, I if I was there in, you know, the trading room, I basically tell them to to cut with the bull crap because there's no reason for them to be selling off. Every other indicator is fine. The February drop, the February jobs report was good. Inflation's low. You know, things are gr uh, everything other than this coronavirus stuff is great. And yet, we're here in a situation where everybody's panicking because everybody else is panicking because everybody else was panicking about getting sick. For crying out loud, it's the stupidest. It, it's really stupid, honestly. There is zero reason for the market to be crashing. Anyway, so. I did drop the economic modifier because a market crash is a good indicator of where voters think the economy is. Generally speaking, I believe that people think that the economy is decent other than the market, and we're just waiting to see if that's actually true or not. Um, as you can see, we've got some new polls, and if I get any that have a candidate other than Biden or Sanders, I'm going to drop those candidates from the average because no one other than Biden and Sanders have a real chance of winning the Democratic nomination as of right now unless there's some sort of miraculous broker convention where Bloomberg decides to do something stupid, but we'll see. And a few other polls, as always, I am ignoring any that do not include both candidates, though I was tempted to include this one because Biden has a significantly greater chance of winning the Democratic nomination than Sanders does. And now we can go back to the map and kind of discuss it. This is basically what my personal prediction has been for a while now except changing Ohio, Georgia, and Texas, you know, Ohio, Georgia, and Texas to likely rather than lean, and this is a likely rather than a lean. And, of course, leaning uh, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, and Florida. Because my map is, you know, my, and, of course, leaning, actually, I think I, Michigan tilted, but leaning Minnesota, Virginia, making this a likely, this is safe. New Jersey is safe. But the reason that I have those differences is because, for me, it's a confidence margin. Um, you know, I'm more confident about those states, and my model is predicting these states based off of a point prediction, but I'm using it and presenting it as an area prediction um, where you have the freedom to say, okay, well, these states are tilting. So there's a good chance that uh, we have a map where this happens. You know, there's this could be a map, right? If we take all the tilts and flip them. Now, of course, that also means that, you know, Virginia is competitive means Nevada is competitive, it means New Hampshire, Maine at large are competitive, Michigan and Minnesota are competitive, 
And anything within the league could become, you know, very competitive. So states like Iowa, Ohio, Georgia, Texas, Maine second. Um, or Colorado and New Mexico, for example. And anything the likely, chances are it won't become competitive um, but it could in, a, in more than one instance. Like, it's not just in a random poll is going to throw things off. Um, Delaware, I reserve the right to change my mind on that one. But I think that Delaware is more competitive than I think people give it credit for. I'm not saying that Trump is going to win it or even come within 5%. But he could be well within 10%. I'd say within 8 um, based off of what I've seen from approval polling, as well as the one opinion poll we have now. Obviously, if Biden is on, uh, if Biden is the nominee, which he likely will be, Delaware just won't be competitive at all. So, yeah, that's kind of where things stand for the presidential race. I think the GOP. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to retake the House. Um, but their Senate majority is pretty much pretty much intact, so I don't see a realistic path for the Democrats to take the Senate, honestly. Um, because they need to have a net flip of, I believe, four seats if they take the presidency. Uh, because... It's 53-47 effectively right now. So they need three if they win the presidency, four if they don't. And the two most, their three most likely pickups are Colorado, Arizona, and Maine. Arizona probably won't happen if Donald Trump wins the presidency. North Carolina won't happen. I, I'm just going to say it right out. I, I have it rated as lean Republican, but it's probably more, it's probably much, it's probably very likely that, uh, Tom Till, uh, Tom Tillis wins his Senate seat. Uh, Joni Ernst might be vulnerable, but I don't think so. Um, anyone who says that McConnell might be in danger is an idiot. Um, there is no way that he's going to lose to McGrath or anyone else for that matter. Um, no. And people are trying to use uh, the gubernatorial race from 2018 as proof that Kentucky might consider a Democrat. Well, that's a governor's race. And governor's races are a lot less nationalized, a lot less focused on, and just no one really... And party, you know, crossing party lines is much, much more common. The Kentucky Senate race is going to be extremely nationalized. And that's just going to make sure that Republicans continue to vote for McConnell, even if they hate his guts. Um... Georgia, neither of those Senate races are particularly competitive. Um, you can make the argument for the special election seat, but double barrel Senate race is always, always, always wind up being for the same party. But, yeah, this is... Um, I, I just don't see where the Democrats are picking up four Senate seats in this scenario. Because they're not getting Arizona, they're not getting North Carolina. And they might, and they're not, they wouldn't get Iowa in this scenario, in this map. Um, Colorado, they're probably getting, so that's one flip. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say Suzanne Collins gets voted out. But what's where's that other where are those other two seats? And by the way, they're down back down to a net gain of only one because Arizona, uh, sorry, Alabama is going to flip towards the Republican Party. 
you know, I'll say I'll also give them the benefit of the doubt and say that John James doesn't win in Michigan. So that's still only a net gain of one. This is actually surprisingly well. Sorry about that. This is a surprisingly difficult. There's a surprisingly difficult Senate map uh, for the Democratic Party. And I'm not displaying it right now, but it, it really is a difficult map just because of where the seats are being, you know, where the, the Senate seats that are up for election are. But anyway, I want to thank all y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Remember, likes, comments, subscriptions always, always, always help. And I greatly appreciate each and every one of y'all. Uh, take it easy. Bye-bye.